mentioned the ABC bias. Let me give you a, a perfect example, a shocking example of what I mean. A bias, well, what is the ABC more biased against than Israel? John Lyons is the head of investigative journalism at the ABC. He's now written a, a book or a booklet, Dateline Jerusalem, about what he claims laughably is the toughest assignment in journalism. Tougher, apparently, than even covering the Islamic State. Yes, the hyperbole actually starts with the very title. And also, it goes right on at the very start of an excerpt that ran in the Sydney Morning Herald, which Lyons once edited, by the way. He says that at 53, he started running in the heat of Jerusalem. He was based there for six years, easy posting. He says, over four months, I'd become the fittest I've been since I was 18. I needed to be. I was about to face the full fury of Australia's pro-Israel lobby. And again, I'm thinking, you know, uh, why the exercise to be really, really fit? To, well, to be fit enough to fight Mossad assassins? Or so he can run very fast when the Israel lobby comes hunting for him? I mean, the whole thing's absurd. But no, Lyons reckons there is a sinister Israeli lobby in this country led by the Israeli embassy and the Australia Israel Jewish Affairs Council, AJAC. And he knew, he said, the hardline supporters of Israel and Australia well enough to understand that a story he was then writing, it would unleash a propaganda fatwa against them. How interesting that he uses a word borrowed from Islamist terrorists, fatwa, to describe the awfulness of Jews. That should have warned him again. Hyperbole alert. Anyway, his theory is this. It's the sort of pressure that I've never experienced covering anything else. And the pressure is essentially to try to uh, reduce and minimise uh, any criticisms at all of Israel. But here's the truth as I see it. There are defenders of Israel here. They're not all the Jewish lobby. I'm a defender of Israel. And when they complain about media bias of the ABC in particular, they have plenty to complain about. That's the problem, particularly with the ABC. You remember early this year, just one example of many that I've covered on this show. You remember early this year when the Hamas terrorist group that runs Gaza fired rockets into Israel and Israel retaliated? Well, the ABC News reports back then put it exactly the other way around, claiming that it was Israel that started it. A series of explosions lit up the night in northern Gaza, signalling airstrikes by the Israeli military. In response, the militant group Hamas has fired hundreds of rockets at Israeli cities. In retaliation, Hamas and other militant groups fired hundreds of rockets into Israel. I could give you so many such examples, but in ABC interviews, Promoting his, his conspiracy theory, no challenge from ABC uh, interviewers. I mean, he was giving even bizarre examples like this about a report by a far-left organisation led by a vicious critic of Israel, likening it, you know, to the Nazis and all that, not getting a huge run in the media here, this poor organisation, when it abused Israel yet again. They did a report saying that, in their view, Israel has now crossed the threshold into being an apartheid state. That was the actual finding. And barely a peep, barely a mention of that in Australia. Yet it was big on the New York Times, BBC, foreign media, Washington Post and others, went huge on it, virtually not a single word in the Australian media. Barely a mention in the Australian media? In fact, the ABC as left-wing as the two organisations he mentioned, happily promoted that very same smear of an apartheid state. Have a listen. That an occupier and a coloniser, a state that is based on a racial apartheid system. Have... Israel is practising apartheid. And Israel is targeting civilians. It's brutal military occupation. And the solution is impose sanctions on Israel. Where there's innocent lives being lost in talk of, it's not apartheid, it's just elements of apartheid. It's not cool, you know. And we're trying to wipe out a culture here. You know, that's not OK. Is there no end of freaks that the ABC can't drag on to smear Israel? I'm sorry to say it, but his book, John Lyon's book, seems to me exactly the kind that anti-Semites would just love to buy. Sorry, John, I've got to say it as I see it. Joining me is the national head of AJAC, one of the 
main targets of Lyon's book, uh, part of the so-called Israel lobby that made him have to exercise so fast and hard so he'd be super fit to beat Mark Latham. Uh, not Mark Latham, Mark Liebler. Mark Le Latham's coming. Mark Liebler is on now. Mark Liebler, it's great to catch up with you again. There is a, an Israel lobby that is making editors too scared, apparently, too scared to criticise Israel. Is this true? Is this false? Well, what do you think? I mean, it, it, we're told in this um, book that uh, Paul Keating, the editors and the journalists stand up to him when he was Prime Minister, same thing with John Howard, but not the Jewish lobby. They self-censor self -censor when it comes to the Jewish lobby. Um, not only that, um, it, it's also pointed out here that um, only three people, believe this or not, he says in his book, I, I don't know where the obsession comes from, only three people can tell the editors of The Australian what they can and what they can't publish. Rupert Murdoch, Lachlan Murdoch, <laughs> and Colin Rubenstein. Would you <laughs> believe that? That's the head of AJ. And, 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 and Andrew, I mean, look, look, this is, it's laughable. And, and this is the basis for accusing AJAC of um, Im improperly corrupting the journalistic process. Look, it's, it's worse than that. I mean, it's, it's worse, but it's, it's really funny. For example, he says specifically that there is no lobby in Australia as powerful as the Israel lobby. So the Israel lobby, AJAC, is more powerful than the BCA, more powerful than the Australia Conservation Foundation, more powerful than GetUp, more powerful than the IPA, more powerful than the ACTU. I mean, where does it begin and where does it end? I mean, I, I, I just, you know, frankly, um, and, and, you know, this is the head of investigative journalism at the ABC. Now, what oh, do you it, say? That's I mean, the bit. It, it, it's, Mark, it's, that's I, the bit I, that's I frightened me. Although, although after what you've just said, I mean, we've had arguments, very heated arguments about other issues. I think this might have to be the last time I ever criticise you. I had no idea you were that uh, terrifying. Well, I was going to, I was going to ask you, Andrew. Uh, do you feel intimidated by me if we have arguments? over other issues? Do you self well, now I am. I mean, John Lyon's book, I've got to re <laughs> believe every word of this, apparently. I've got to start exercising now, too. Uh, Mark, but the point is, you know, some of the evidence he gives, like, like uh, uh, Colin Rubenstein, who is the executive director of your organisation, um, sent two editors a memo saying, oh, listen, you've been at a private briefing with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, that was off the record, just reminding you it's off the record. But by the way, here's some information that you might be able to use. And John Lyons produces this as an example of how <laughs> Conor Rubenstein is censoring journalists. I mean, it's just insane. But to that I, point, I mean, you raised uh, it. Unfortunately, I mean, you know, the word insane sounds very apt. I mean, I, I've actually looked at the complete exchange of emails in relation to that incident. It's absolutely clear that uh, Colin Rubenstein wasn't trying, you know, he suggests that Colin Rubenstein is the one person who can tell the editors of The Australian what they can and can't publish. Uh, I mean, but that's just... not what Colin Rubenstein was doing. And it's obvious to any objective of an observer. So I, I, I just find the whole thing, I find it very difficult to understand and follow well, I have to. Uh, well, I do too, Mark. And uh, I, just touching on the point that you, uh, di you you briefly touched on too, that a man like this, with this kind of Jewish conspiracy theory, has a senior position at the ABC. I find truly shocking. Mark Liebler, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I'm sorry it's been on a subject so appalling. Thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Andrew.